it's continuing to, to continuing to rise. Seven, almost seven, almost seven hundred million handsets, over six hundred million handsets right now in China. And uh, this is some newer information. This is March two thousand nine for the ranking. Of course, Nokia is still at thirty one percent. At uh, still number one, Samsung's number two, Moto number three. But look what Tianyu, Tianyu Lantong is number four. Uh, Zhongxin, uh, Zhongxin, and uh, and LG, and then Huawei. You might say Huawei. What's the story with Huawei? Well, Huawei doesn't really sell handsets inside China. This is their first venture to sell handsets. They're selling to China Unicom. Otherwise, Huawei sells OEM to the Western uh, Vodafone and uh, some of those other companies. Um, Let's look at the mobile phone sales, though. As you can see, they're going down. The sales, the volume of production may be going up, but the sales are actually going down. Um, and the cost of a fake has been estimated by, this is, I'm sorry, I don't give the credits. This is the New York Times did an article, and they basically said about 40 bucks. This is from a famous uh, organization here, uh, BDA, and they estimated 20% of the market is Shanghai. And, or illegal or gray, and the rest, the 80% is legit. So this is not stuff I'm making up in the air. I have all kinds of resources for this information. And the, so if you look at the Chinese domestic market, now let's distinguish the two different things here. A uh, Chinese-made handset from uh, a well-established Western brand accepted by the operators, like Tianyu is accepted by all three operators, and uh, 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 Lenovo, Chang Hong, uh, Hire, all of these companies are not Shanghai, but they use the MediaTek chip. Okay, but they're also being affected by Shanghai. So please, let's make sure that we get this very, very clear. Um, and so Shanghai is impacting really everyone. Uh, this is basically if you want to buy a cell phone, how do you buy it? Where do you buy it? Do you, do you go directly to the operator? You can go to the operator's uh, designated stores, but a lot of people don't go to, I have to go to China Mobile to buy my cell phone. No, you can buy your cell phone anywhere. These are just the channels where you could buy your cell phone. Hence, what I saw in Singapore, which is very, very interesting. I was in Singapore about a month ago, and I went to Simlim, Simlim Square. If you know Singapore, that's where the cell phones are sold. Guess what? You go into the store, you can see all the... All the, all the you know, the tier one vendors, but there's always a Shanghai stall with a Shanghai lady who's somehow studying in Singapore, and you talk to them, they're from the rural provinces of China, and they're the ones selling the Shanghai handsets, and they're doing brisk business, okay? So the Shanghai phenomenon is not just uh, in China. It's in Taiwan, you can find it in Hong Kong, you can find it in Singapore, you can find it in, in uh, India. You, in fact, the Indian government had to stop non-branded handsets uh, and so they kind of, they're trying to cut it out from the market. Thailand, anyway, it's, it's all over. Probably in the West, too. Probably in the West. We just don't know that it's penetrated North America. I guarantee you it has. Probably. Probably. Now, these banded phone characteristics, um, let, let's, t let's talk about it a bit. Wow, isn't that cool? Spider-Man or Batman cell phone. Wow, wouldn't you like one of those? Maybe not you or I, but a 10-year-old kid would love one, right? Uh, how about this, a paparazzi phone? <laughs> um, so basically, they're cool. They're cool looking. They have unique functions and features. And they're stylish. And they've got innovation. What is a shanjaiji? Well, these are some of the distinguishing things. Legal is not what I would call a shanjaiji. Because Shanghai Gs are not legal. Now, what type of handset can we expect? Buddha Mobile here. Basically, you can see seven speaker phones. Wow, boombox. Young kids can now go. Uh, they don't have to go to the disco anymore. They, set, they put the handset there, and then they can hear the music coming from this boombox. Wow, tremendous. You can create your own uh, party. There you go. Um, so you have, I saw a cell phone that said, Hello Kitty. And when the thing rang, it had 12 different colors illuminating. Wow, it was fantastic. I said, ships can use that coming in for harbor. There you go. It was very, very interesting. Um, as senior citizens, they also have uh, handsets with louder voice, bigger keycaps so that people can, uh, older people can use it. You know, we have a generational gap here. 
Older people, they're not so tech savvy. We, and we all, we'll all get there one day, all of us. We'll all, we'll all get there, trust me. But uh, we have to be, take care that our senior citizens are not so techy geeky. They just want something that works, basically. Um, and we have a religious handset here, um, blessed by monks. Oh yes, these handsets are blessed by eminent monks. So, well, maybe we can have one for Catholics. I mean, I, I, I could probably use one. Um, and all of these handsets typically support two SIM cards. But the first company I, su I saw supporting two SIM cards was, uh, you know, Coupa, Coupad. You know that company? They were the first company I saw to do two SIM cards. Uh, a company down in Shenzhen. They're not a Shenzhen company. It's actually quite a, quite a good company. All right. So this basically looks like a normal phone, right? Turn it over. Wow. We have a woofer, a tweeter, a, a whatever you want. Um, two amplifiers vibrating. This one claims that you can use it for 366 days. Whoa. What's that all about? <laughs> Nokia, guys. You might want to find out where the hell that battery comes from. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, all right. So these are some of the handsets. I'm going to go through this real quick. Some of the handsets that are in the market. This is very interesting stuff. Let's start with this. Whoa. So for our smokers in the crowd, you can buy a cigarette cell phone. Yeah. Where are the matches? I don't know. But basically, a cigarette cell phone. Uh, as you can see, you put your cigarettes here. You can put any brand you want. And, uh, and you talk on the other side. Many famous brands here. Okay, how about uh, this one? Marbara. Now, this is a cell phone that looks like a car. Chinese people are into new cars, right? Hey, look at my new car. Yeah, it's really a cell phone. Oh, how cool. Um, uh, for us Europeans who like the Mercedes-Benz, there you go. There you, can, you can find your Mercedes-Benz cell phone. Um, this is what we call the Big Thunder, which is more of like uh, the boombox approach with, uh, if you notice, uh, two SIM cards there. And basically it's, uh, it's meant for, for a large, uh, it's meant, for, well, you, actually, one of the things they use it for is for farmers who lose the cell phone. And so what they need to do is have another phone to call it to know where to locate it in the field. Because once they put it down, they don't always know where it is. They're talking on the phone, they're tending to the sheep. And then it's somewhere in the grass. Oh my goodness, where's my cell phone? And when you call it, it has a very high ringtone. Very, very loud. It's almost like riot police. Um, so these big, big thunder phones, they call them. Have you ever seen one of these? It's really cool. A lot of speakers. Now, we have a paparazzi phone. So you attach the lens to a cell phone, and it becomes a paparazzi phone. Uh, just another example of a paparazzi phone. Um, it can also do closed circuit monitoring. So some people need that. I mean, it's a positive and a negative thing here. If you have a child in your home and the child, you put the child there and you put the, the, cell, if you put the cell phone there and you can monitor, you put a, a closed circuit uh, um, uh, element uh, uh, camera and then you can monitor it with the, with the cell phone as you're walking around the home. The uh, child may be on the second floor. Um, so you can actually hear and see uh, the child, and that, that's kind of cool. I mean, that's a positive thing. Of course, the negative thing is, is these uh, peeping Toms who want to peep on our charming young Mamie right there. Um, uh, but these paparazzi phones, they have another function that I've seen, which is they are, they are currency authenticators. Very interesting. Um, uh, as you see there, uh, I wonder, can anybody tell, you, tell me what, what money that is? Look at the money there. Is that, that's a, that's a hundred. Is it rimming B? What is it? Ah, that's, we'll save it for another day. Um, now, we talked about this closed circuit situation. Um, you can monitor people, and that does not look like a dopoda, a real dopoda.